Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning about inequalities for one triangle, part one. Let's get started with the following problem. Number one, given triangle ABD, what is the measure of angle ACB in the figure below? And secondly, can you rank segment BC, segment BD, and segment CD according to their lengths? If so, how? So let's solve number one. For number one, we want to find the measure of angle ACB as shown in the figure. How do we find that measure? Well, we know the following theorem. The measure of the external angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of its remote interior angles. Therefore, the measure of angle ACB is equal to the measure of angle CDB plus the measure of angle CBD. Now we can substitute the angle measures provided in the diagram to obtain the following. That the measure of angle ACB is equal to 50 plus 55 or that the measure of angle ACB is equal to 105. What about the second problem? How do we rank segment BC, segment BD, and segment CD according to their lengths? Well, let's first find the angle measure of angle BCD. We know that angle BCD and the 105 degrees for angle ACB are supplementary. Therefore, angle BCD must be 75 degrees as shown in the diagram. Can we now rank the segments according to their lengths? Well, let's think about this. Which segment in triangle CBD should be the largest? Can we somehow figure this out by just looking at the angle measures? Well, if we look at the largest angle in triangle CBD, we have this angle being the largest angle, the 75 degrees. So, that has the biggest opening or the widest angle. So logically, the one that is opposite or the segment that is opposite that angle should be the longest segment. Let me demonstrate what I'm trying to say here. So let's look at the following triangle ABD and notice here that we have measure of angle BCD to be about 75 degrees here and the other angles are marked as well here. Notice what happens when we increase the measure of angle BCD. So let's say we're going to 77, 78, 80 degrees, and so on and so on. So if the angle becomes really large, for example, let's stop at this point. Now we have measure of angle BCD to be about 120 degrees. How does the segment opposite, this segment over here, BD, compare to the previous segment when measure of angle BCD was 75 degrees? Well, it definitely is longer. And that's exactly my point here. Uh, the point here is that the larger the angle, the larger the segment opposite that angle becomes and vice versa. Now, going back to this lesson here for problem number two, which segment in triangle CBD is the largest then? Well, we know that segment BD must be the largest segment. Now, what we want to do is to look at the second largest angle. And as we notice here from the diagram, we have this angle here to be the second largest. Therefore, the segment opposite, which is segment CD, is the second largest segment. And then we're left with angle BCD, which is 50 degrees. Therefore, that is the shortest segment. And that is basically the answer for the second problem. So this particular example that we just looked at introduces us to new theorems pertaining inequalities for one triangle. So let's look at these theorems. Now in the previous problem, how were we able to determine that this is 105 degrees over here? Well, because we use the theorem that the measure of the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of its remote interior angles. Now, if we look at this angle, the 105, so let me mark it here, how does that angle 
compared to only one of the remote interior angles? Well, we know that in this case, the 105 or the exterior angle is always greater than either of these two remote interior angle. We know that the measure of angle ACB is greater than the measure of angle CDB. And we also know that the measure of angle ACB must be greater than the measure of angle CBD. What's the reason for that? What new postulate or theorem could we develop pertaining to inequalities? Well, here we can say that the measure of the exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle. But how do we know that this is always true? Well, it turns out that this is actually a theorem and it can be proven. So let's prove this theorem. So here we want to prove that the measure of the exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle. So according to the diagram here, we're given that angle one is an exterior angle of triangle DEF. We also know that EFG is a ray. So therefore it's straight, especially at point F. We want to prove that measure of angle one is greater than measure of angle D and that measure of angle one is greater than measure of angle E. So to get started, let's set up a statement reason table first. Once we set up the statement reason table, let's add any given that we're going to need here. Basically, we want to say that angle one is an exterior angle of triangle DEF and ray EFG as our givens. What else can we say now? Then we can say that measure of angle one is equal to measure of angle D plus measure of angle E because the measure of the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of its remote interior angles. Then we can say that the measure of angle one is greater than measure of angle D. Why is that? Well, we know here that we have something very similar to the partition postulate, right? The whole is greater than any of its parts. Basically, what we're trying to say here is that if we have uh, the whole here, which is measure of angle one, that must be greater than any of its parts. So it has to be greater than measure of angle D and measure of angle E, right? If we, for example, cancel out this one, then measure of angle one is greater than measure of angle D. And that's basically what we're saying for number four. And in a similar manner, we can also state that the measure of angle one must be greater than measure of angle E. And the reason is the same as number four. And we're basically done with the proof. And this means that we have validated the theorem that the measure of the exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle. So from now on, we don't need to do this proof over and over again. We can just use the theorem and go straight to the fact that measure of angle one is greater than measure of angle D or measure of angle E. Let's now go back to the second problem where we had to rank segment BC, BD, and CD according to their lengths. We were able to do so because we reasoned through the fact that if the angle is the largest, then the side opposite must be the longest as well. So it turns out that there's actually a theorem based on that as well. Let's formulate the theorem first as our hypothesis, and then we will prove the theorem. Let's say we have a triangle as shown in the figure here triangle RST, in which two of the sides are unequal in length. Let's, for example, say that side or segment RT is greater than segment RS. Let's write that in first. Now, if we're given that this segment over here is greater than segment RS over here, then what can we conclude here in terms of angles? Well, it will logically make sense that this angle here that is opposite the side must be larger than the angle that is opposite the smaller side. And that is basically what we want to prove here. So here we want to prove that measure of angle RST is greater than measure of angle T. Let's set up a statement reason table. And after setting up the statement reason table, let's write the first two givens. Now, how do we prove this though? What do we need to do here? Well, it turns out that we need to draw an additional segment in the triangle in order to prove that. So let's specify the point on segment RT. Let's call that point Z such that 
RZ is congruent to segment RS. So now we can draw segment SZ as shown in the diagram such that segment RZ and segment RS are congruent. And basically the reason is that two points determine a line. In this case, we're referring to points S and Z. Now, why is it convenient to draw point Z on segment RT such that RZ and RS are congruent, those two segments? Because we end up with an isosceles triangle. Triangle ZRS is isosceles. So here we can say that angle RZS is congruent to angle RSZ, as shown in the figure. Because if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent as well. At this point, let me also convert from congruent angles to equal in measure, because here we're dealing with inequalities. And when we deal with inequalities, we can only compare measures and not the angles or the segments. Now, if we look at measure of angle RST over here, that is composed of measure of angle RSZ plus measure of angle ZST as shown here in the diagram. How does that even help us? Well, we can simply compare measure of angle RST with measure of angle RSZ. And we know that measure of angle RST is greater than measure of angle RSZ because the whole is greater than any of its parts. Now, at this point, we can substitute what is highlighted in yellow. And here we can state that the measure of angle RST is greater than measure of angle RZS, as shown in the diagram now, because of the substitution postulate of inequality. Now, how does measure of angle RZS, this one over here, compare to this angle? Well, we know that that is actually greater than measure of angle T, because measure of angle RZS is the exterior angle of triangle TZS. So let's write that in. So here we can state that the measure of angle RZS is greater than the measure of angle T because the measure of the exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angles. And here we can see that from step eight and nine, we can now use the transitive property of inequality to state that, that the measure of angle RST is greater than the measure of angle T by the transitive property of inequality. And there you go, we have completed the proof. Let's now look at the diagram. According to the given, we were given that the measure of segment RT is greater than the measure of segment RS, as shown in the diagram. And therefore, we were able to prove that the measure of angle RST is greater than measure of angle T. What do you notice here? That these are the opposite angles of those respective sides in the same order of inequality. So basically we're stating that, okay, if two sides of a triangle are unequal, then the larger side or the larger angle is opposite the larger side, as shown in the diagram now. So we can now formulate the theorem based on that. And we know that it is always true because we have just proven it. So the theorem goes as follows. If two sides of a triangle are unequal, then the larger angle is opposite the larger side. So the beautiful thing about us proving this here is that we don't have to prove this again. We can just use the theorem and just use that theorem in future statement reason tables to prove other statements. The question is, does the converse of the statement work as well? Well, let's first write out the converse of that. So the converse of that statement as shown here is if two angles of a triangle are unequal, then the larger side is opposite the larger angle as highlighted in yellow here. That theorem also makes sense. However, let's prove it first. So let's say that according to the diagram, we have the following givens. Triangle DEF, measure of angle D is greater than measure of angle E. How do we prove that the length of segment FE is greater than the length of segment FD. Well, in this case, the best way to prove it is using an indirect method, as we learned in the previous lesson. So what does that mean? That we have to assume the opposite of the conclusion of whatever we want to prove. Basically, that FE is not greater than segment FD. So let's write that out. 
So if we assume that the length of segment FE is not greater than the length of segment FD, then what else can we conclude here? Well, we can say that by the trichotomy postulate that FE is either equal to FD or that FE is less than FD. So now we have two cases to examine. And in each case, we need to somehow force a contradiction with the given that the measure of angle D is greater than measure of angle E. So let's get started with the first case. So for the first case, if FE is equal to FD, then what can we conclude here? Well, if we look at the diagram, if we make these two segments congruent or equal in measure, then it turns out that this is going to be an isosceles triangle and the angles opposite those sides will be equal in measure as well. Well, then we're going to write that measure of angle D is equal to measure of angle E since triangle DEF is isosceles and angles opposite equal sides are equal in measure. So do we notice anything here? Well, yes, this contradicts the given that measure of angle D is greater than measure of angle E. So let's look at the second case now. The second case states that if the length of segment FE is less than the length of segment FD, what can we say in this case? Well, we can use the previous theorem that we have learned or that we have proved, right? That if two sides of a triangle are unequal, then the larger angle is opposite the larger side. Or in this case, it's going to be the smaller angle is opposite the smaller side, which is still okay. So let's write this in, in our proof here. Okay, so what do we notice at this point? Well, we have another contradiction here. This also contradicts the given that the measure of angle D must be greater than measure of angle E. Okay, so now we contradicted both cases. What does that mean? So our conclusion is as follows. Since both statements led to a contradiction, our assumption that the length of segment FE is not greater than the length of segment FD is wrong. Thus, the length of segment FE must be greater than the length of segment FD. And there you go, we proved it. And now that we have proven this, we can validate the converse of our initial conditional statement then it must be true that if two angles of a triangle are unequal, then the larger side is opposite the larger angle. Let's now summarize all the theorems that we have learned in today's lesson. The first theorem that we have learned was the measure of the exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle. The second theorem was if two sides of a triangle are unequal, then the larger angle is opposite the larger side. And then we learned that if two angles of a triangle are unequal, then the larger side is opposite the larger angle. Okay, so that's basically it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.